Thanks for watching this episode of Travel with Chip. This is video that I shot in Istanbul, Turkey with a prototype camera that did not record audio correctly, so I had to dub it in in the studio. Here we are at Istanbul's Galata Port Cruise Terminal. And you'll notice these fold-down walls on the left-hand side. And the fold-down walls serve to allow and deny access to people who are in the plaza going to the museum, which is the Istanbul Modern Art Museum. They're just above the wall where we are. We're going to come back up to it in just a second. And also the shops and cafes and restaurants uh, to access the waterfront. Uh, when a cruise ship is not in port and obviously they don't want to have the public accessing a cruise ship or the people on the cruise ship bypassing um, security for the cruise ship's sake or for Istanbul's sake. And this is a secure complex in the Galata port. There are a lot of businesses and whatnot. There's actually a security checkpoint that I'll show you here in a little bit. And this is a sophisticated cruise terminal with these walls and with the concrete that uh, I think concrete goes up and down in here like a stage. Here we are at the stern now of the onward and uh, this ramp goes down. This is access point D. There's uh, A through F and so I think they can get three ships in here at one time. I've only ever seen two. I've been here a couple of different times and been at different places. Uh, but this ramp uh, goes down into the basement of the Galata Port Terminal and this would be closed over otherwise and I think it also goes down because that railing does not fold down so I think all of this actually sinks down on rams. I'm not entirely sure how that works uh, but very very sophisticated setup that they have here uh, to limit access to the basement area, the passport control and all the security checkpoints that they have in the Galata Port. And this basement area is also very nicely done, uh, obviously all very brand new. It's only been open for a couple of different years. I remember the last time I came into Istanbul, uh, this was practically brand new and it was uh, new to me because the ships used to come in in a different place. This long hallway I've shortened up a little bit because it is kind of a long and rather boring walk. But you see the sign there for passport control. Uh, there are numerous points for passport control, whether the ship has just come in, they open doors, they close doors, they remove and, and open partitions. And here we go out into uh, the turnstile area, security checkpoint. I had to put the camera in my pocket for a minute so not to uh, arrive, <laughs> get the ire of the security personnel up. Uh, you can see my shoulder there because the camera is just sitting in my pocket. Hello, Mr. Security Guard. No, I'm not filming the inside of the Galata port. We'll see if uh, this comes back to bite me later. Uh, if they see this video, I kind of doubt that they will. But uh, here we are in the Galata port. Grab the camera again and go. And we're going out the doors. On the other side of that is the entrance way. Uh, there's also some parking garages at this level. Now we're one level below and we're going down to two and three levels uh, below the ground level into the basement here. And there's a parking garage here where you can pick up a taxi uh, to get out. Uh, taxis are sometimes waiting there. We got dropped off by a taxi at this level when we arrived the day before, which was a nice convenience, not having to go through a lot of the stuff upstairs. It was worth another 100 or 200 Turkish Lira, which is not very much money these days. And now we're at the bottom level of the basement of the Galata port. Security personnel here are very, very nice. Uh, conversational, you go through, hi, how you doing? Their English is obviously not the greatest, but uh, very, very friendly people, very nice people. And they have additional security screening measures available down here, which uh, we did not use uh, during our trip. We used another set that I'm only able to show a little bit. I did show some of it on re-entry just very briefly because I got chastised by a security guard uh, when I was attempting to film some of it. And he says, no, no filming allowed in here. So back up to street level. We've got a couple more of these to do. Up we go. Nope. Yep, one more. One more little lobby area here with chairs and whatnot. And not very crowded because this is not early in the morning, but uh, about 9, 9.30 in the morning coming off of the ship. And this was the day that we were going to depart Istanbul about 6 o'clock. And I had uh, a couple things I wanted to do. 
with some colleagues and friends over at the Grand Bazaar, which is somewhere we're going uh, in this video as well. A little easy point there within this complex. And then outside is the big mall complex of the Galata Port. You've got people waiting for uh, drivers and such, waiting, tour guides waiting for people coming off of the ship outside and inside collect up their people who had reserved some kind of tour or shore excursion with them. And now we're walking out towards uh, Maclisi Mebusan Kadesi, which is a six lane road, a lot of traffic that runs right along the Bosporus. And we're gonna cross it just up here. So we're looking out towards the street and you'll notice one more security checkpoint. This is the street security checkpoint one of three or four, I believe, because there's one further down towards the mosque, and I think there's at least one uh, a little further down the street, controlling access to the entire Galata Port area, to even the shops and the businesses in that large mall complex in the Galata Port. And you'll see a little bit more of that as we get back on the ship a little bit later. So here we're coming across uh, Meklesi Mabusan. Mebusan. Forgive me, Turks, if I mispronounce it. I'm sure I do. A look back at the at the historic mosque at the Galata port, and the tram is going by. We'll be on the tram a little bit later after we go up the stairs here, just a little bit down the street. So at sea level, you have to climb up some stairs. If you want to venture out from the Galata port, you've got a couple of different options. You've got a number of options because you can catch a taxi and go anywhere you want. I like traveling by foot and by public transportation whenever that is possible. So uh, the easiest way for somebody who's fit to get up to the area around Taksim Square, which is the center of historic uh, Istanbul and this part of Istanbul, a city of 21 million people, uh, is to just go up the street a little bit and you've got the stairs and you'll find it on Google. Google has a little thing where it's got the portrait stairs. Well, there's the portrait on the stairs. Uh, they're the red stairs to me uh, because they're painted red, as you can see here. And uh, at the top of this particular flight of stairs, I had a couple little buddies waiting for me, those two dogs, that looked back down the red stairs. The rainbow stairs are the next ones uh, down towards Katakoi. But back to our little dog buddies here. Hi, buddies. Hi, doggy dogs. These dogs would walk with me here for a while through these little back street neighborhoods uh, going up the hill. We're not up the hill yet. We're looking at our couple little different options here. We're on Ilyas Shelebi uh, Skokok. Skokok is alley. Kadesi is road. Uh, there's something along the lines of boulevard in Turkish. Uh, you have to translate the street abbreviations. So we go up these little alleys in historic Istanbul, cobblestone streets and brick pavements, a lot of street art. But this is a generally residential area just above the Galata port and a pretty area here. And we have friendly dogs and of course there's lots of cats because you're in Turkey. Turkey and Greece, you see a lot of, uh, a lot of feral cats, feral dogs around and uh, people feed them, take care of the animals. Uh, it's a great environment for a dog. If you're not somebody's pet, you're everybody's pet. When you're going through Istanbul, going through Greece and the Greek Isles, and our little dog buddies just hoping that I've got a little bit of something to give them, I guess, I don't know, but uh, the black dog is kind of funny because he's like, here, you go this way, you need to go, you need to go this way. Don't go that way. We're gonna look over here, we're gonna sniff this out. You wanna pee here with me? Great, let's, let's have a pee. But uh, you'll see ahead that we've got a few more stairs to climb uh, and uh, a few. I'm, I'm uh, be given a conservative estimate because there are a lot of stairs when you come up from the Galata port and going up into the upper streets of this particular neighborhood. So we'll ramp up to the trash skip there. Yeah, lovely. And lots of cats. Uh, that cat box put there probably for the strays, not for anybody's particular pet cat. And we've got lots of cats here uh, hanging out, waiting to get fed by some neighbor. So looking down through the palm fronds, just climbed up that flight of stairs. Uh, flight is again a very conservative word for the number of stairs involved. I cut out my heavy breathing, but I think this is the end of our stairs for this portion. So go up to the street level here. And now it's about 9.30, maybe even 10 o'clock in the morning. 
and I was kind of surprised there wasn't more activity, but you, it looks like people are just walking their dogs. It's kind of like seven o'clock in the morning anywhere else. Uh, I'm trying to remember if this was a Monday or a Tuesday. I think it was a Tuesday. So we're, you know, we're kind of going into the middle of the week here and people are just ambling around. It's a beautiful day, it's a little bit on the hot side. Uh, it had been a very hot week in Istanbul the week prior. It had been, you know, 40 centigrade, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, I want to say it was about in the upper 20s, low 30s uh, this particular day. So it was a lot, it was a pleasant day to walk around, particularly in the morning. The humidity was a little bit high, uh, but that is summertime on the Mediterranean. And uh, you don't get a lot higher up in the Mediterranean than Istanbul. They have some cold winters in Istanbul. They get a lot of ice. And with uh, a lot of these steep hills, the ice is treacherous. There's a little brown dog, buddy. I think we're gonna leave him finally at this corner and we're gonna continue around. Now these little streets, as long as you maintain a direction of going away from the water and a little bit to your right, sort of winding around, you've got a lot of different little streets uh, and alleyways to choose from. Uh, and a lot of little cafes that you can stop at along the way here. You know, again, we're in the mid-morning hours here and people are just coming in and opening up their restaurants, uh, getting ready for a busy, busy day. A black car taxi there. But uh, very quiet here in this residential area. A little cat waiting for maybe a free meal at this cafe. Thought he was cute. And uh, we just continue on the beverage deliveries coming into that restaurant there. Fried chicken shop, which I found really funny in Istanbul, Turkey, they love fried chicken. Had a guy who was talking to me about like going to KFC. I said, no, you don't want to go to KFC. But uh, you'll see, you got a lot of different options here. So again, maintain your, your sense of direction and wind around, do a little wandering here. Go down this street over here and just go up the cobblestones. But I'm trying to get over to Sarasselvillar Kadesi. And I'm, again, I'm butchering the pronunciation, I'm sure, but there's a main street that goes into uh, Texum Square, and it's Sarasso Villa Cadesi, which is a, a big two-lane street. And we'll, we're, we're just trying to head over towards that through this rabbit warren of little streets and alleys, these cobblestone streets in this generally late 19th, early 20th century part of Istanbul, which would have been Constantinople when a lot of this was built. Uh, even though it was Turkish, it had the uh, name of antiquity until 1922-23 uh, when the uh, young Turks took over Turkey and, and uh, founded the present Turkish Republic. So we're coming up now on a university and there's uh, quite a number of nearly identical buildings for this university. We'll look down the street to our right here and just show you some of that. You actually go down a hill a little bit there and I said, I don't think that's the right way that goes into the university. And I'd been this way the night before. I'd been up here and it was really nice. There were uh, the cafes open and everything else and something happened to the data on that one. I don't quite remember now. But uh, people were sitting out in front of their little antique store here and then the cafes, there's a little Japanese restaurant down the street here. If you like Japanese, I've led you to the Japanese restaurant. It's uh, up there on the right, on memory serves. And then directly in front, uh, at the end of this small street is uh, Sarasil Villar Cadesi, where that bus is. And there's a hospital there, quite a large hospital uh, serving this neighborhood of Istanbul. And we sort of go uphill and down dale. Uh, the hills are uh, omnipresent in this area. But uh, Taksim Square is generally as high as this part goes. And we're almost really at the, at the top of these hills. So we're out on Sarasso Villa now and going by pharmacies and uh, some other little shops and markets here across from the hospital. And we'll look at some more of the historic neighborhood around this area. You know, some pretty architecture there you can see and it gets even prettier. Uh, gets into almost all 19th century architecture. And people just getting ready for their day or having already started their day walking the streets. Not many tourists in this part headed over to Taksim Square and we're quite close to Taksim. It's just up that street and around that left-hand bend somewhat. 
but a city in a lot of ways not unlike a lot of other cities with their markets and shops and restaurants and businesses. As you get closer to Texan Square, the buildings get a lot taller. There are a lot more hotels and uh, commerce related stuff. And then the way that we're going to go, we're going to go down, uh, I want to say it's Istiklal, which is a pedestrian street. It's Istiklal Qadisi. Uh, it's a pedestrian street that goes down out of Taksim Square. So we're getting much closer now to Taksim. On the left-hand side is the Orthodox Cathedral. Uh, interesting that there's an Orthodox Cathedral in the heart of Istanbul, but this was Constantinople. And the Orthodox Cathedral is a very large complex there, and it's uh, surrounded by uh, the buildings and the, the main mosque at Texum Square, whose name I do not immediately remember, but I'm sure you can look that up, up at Texum. Uh, another very pretty structure. And we're going by a lot of the uh, more touristy shops here and uh, little takeaway street food sort of restaurants. But lots of commerce up here at Texum Square. There's a place to park your car if you happen to come up here with a car. I've had a uh, donor at one of these little restaurants here on the left. At nighttime, this is just bustling. You almost can't make it through on the on the sidewalk on the other side of the street. is just full of people at nighttime. And we're approaching Taxim Square right now. Guy with a suitcase here looking for his hotel. Maybe he just got off the uh, Azamara onward the day before or something. Who knows? Taxim Square in the immediate distance, the mosque, the historic tram car, we're just in the distance there, you can just make out the historic tram car, delivery trucks making their deliveries this morning, trash truck carrying away what's left of the deliveries from yesterday. And one of the historic trams cars, uh, you know, one of the historic tram cars that runs down Istiklal right here and we'll re-encounter that at another time, but uh, I'd not sure if you can just get on that with your Istanbul card or if there's not a separate fare for that, uh, but I'm sure that that's a very pleasant trip going down Istiklal uh, with the historic tram. And the monument to Kemal Ataturk and the founding of the modern Turkish state up here at Taksim Square, surrounded by a lot of large buildings. And there's lots more. There's another large avenue that is for car and truck traffic that goes down not quite but almost parallel to Istiklal and it goes uh, very steeply up and down the hill and there's a lot more commerce there but you're going to see a lot of shops as we go down Istiklal uh, again at nighttime when you're at Taksim Square there are a lot of people here getting their pictures taken I think we run into one or two uh, here in just a moment who are uh, taking advantage of the photo opportunity there's the great mosque and in the distance there, the Orthodox Cathedral. So just a short walk around the side of the monument to Kemal Ataturk. Turkish flag, many other flags flying around other parts of the square. And we're looking towards where we want to go next, which is down Istiklal. And so we're going to kind of go in between the mosque and the cathedral and go down that avenue in the immediate distance. The tram is still waiting for its passengers or another one. I don't remember how long I had been standing there. And now we're on Istiklal. And the first shops and restaurants and very pretty architecture. There's some newer buildings in here as well. This is a long pedestrian street. Uh, there's a little bit of delivery traffic that's allowed as you go down Istiklal, uh, but it's ever steeper as it goes down the hill, and conversely, it's ever steeper going up the hill, uh, coming up from Katakoy, which is at the bottom, which is at the Golden Horn at the Bosporus. And that is our destination in this video as we walk down this hill.
Lots of flags up. It's always celebration on Istiklal. At nighttime again, very, very busy, big, big crowds. And this fellow who's a Persian guy wanted to stop and talk to me and he did and unfortunately I lost everything that he said and uh, very friendly guy and unfortunately we lost everything that he said uh, we had a nice chat on the street and a lot of people will stop you if you're speaking English they'll stop you as you walk down the street and say hey what are you doing who are you where are you from they're interested to know where you're from he was from uh, what is now modern-day Iran uh, and is living in Istanbul and that situation there uh, caused him to come to Istanbul and come to Turkey uh, for the freedoms that he can enjoy in Istanbul versus his home country. The street vendors just setting up. You've always got uh, you know, a variety of different things from figs to nuts to corn on the cob, uh, very affordable street food from little street vendors here, but they're just getting set up for the day. It's still morning as we walk down Istiklal big store there, whatever it is, hadn't even opened yet. But a beautiful morning, good good shadows, you know, good shade, uh, escape the heat. I think a large department store complex there just opening up. In Greece it would be the Hondo Center, something along those lines. I mean there's a Sephora store there. And pretty architecture. Some of which, again, is newer, some is much, much older, going back to the days of Constantinople. But great preservation here. They take very good care of their historic architecture. And the climate is very favorable here, too, so there's not um, any issues that I'm aware of, you know, beyond what you have to do to keep historic buildings up. in Istanbul versus, you know, it's not like a, an overly humid, a, a, a tropical climate or anything like that. And the winters are, they have some ice, but it's not that bad. A little side street off of Istiklal here, continuing down around a curve and going by, I believe this was, I'm not sure if this was the Russian embassy. It was definitely one of the embassies or it was a, like a palace it may have been the Presidential Palace of Turkey, come to think of it. We can look that up. But big gates there. I know I went by the Russian Embassy and they were protesting the war in Ukraine at the Russian Embassy. There, was, there were already protesters lining up. And a little bit later on we encounter the Swedish Embassy uh, to Turkey, or the consulates probably, because the capital of Turkey is not Istanbul, it's Ankara, which is in the middle of the country. bus doing a little turnaround here in the street. I believe that was the police, which is why there's a bus on Estaclal. Yeah, the police were set up there, the police patrols. Very, very safe in this part of Istanbul. There are places, just like in every other city, uh, that are not safe. Uh, but you got a feeling that you were not in danger of being robbed particularly at this time of day. Uh, one of the things you really want to watch out for are pickpockets. Uh, it's a crime they can't solve. You know, you get into a big crowd, make sure you secure, particularly if you're traveling from overseas, your passport uh, and your wallet. Looking through a fence here at a, I believe it's a Catholic cathedral. It was not an Orthodox cathedral, uh, but a Roman Catholic cathedral here and it's uh, San Antonio Quilicesi, Saint Antoine, and it was open for tours or there was a service about to start, I don't remember. Uh, I did not go in, I wanted to continue down the avenue, but a very large church property here, and I believe it was built right at the beginning of the 20th century. It was still, again, it was still Constantinople under the Ottoman Empire uh, and not the new Turkish Republic. Uh, but there's a lot of religious tolerance in Turkey to where there are Christian churches such as the Greek Orthodox Cathedral at Texan Square and that large Catholic church and many others in a city of 21 million people 
You obviously have people from other countries who are, uh, if not permanent residents, then short-term residents for purposes of business or maybe just personal choice. A flatter part of Istiklal, and I'm not sure if we're at Gallup Dede or not, I think that's where it starts going down the hill where the tram tracks turn off, and that's not too far down here, but the tram tracks uh, turn off to the side and then the rest of it, uh, even for the tram passengers, is a walk down to the Golden Horn. A lot of stores still not open here, but a big tourist area here, both for Turkish tourists and for international tourists who come to Istanbul. Uh, to walk this throughout the course of an evening must be very pleasant. Of course, also if you're staying in a hotel along Istiklal, I'm sure it's very, very pleasant. We have a little bit of a little taste of America up here at the Burger King. Burger King on Istiklal. A friend of mine was joking about having to go, he lives uh, on Crete part of the year, and was joking about having to go to the mainland to go to McDonald's, which he probably wouldn't have done. I believe this was the Swedish embassy area, and here we have caught up with the tram. Uh, the tram is slowly making its way down. Uh, so we're beating the tram, we're not walking that fast, so the tram, the historic tram, moves very slowly as it goes down Istiklal. And we're now passing the property of the Swedish consulate, not the embassy. More historic architecture up there at the distance. I believe this is where uh, Istiklal then becomes Gallup Dede, uh, where the tram tracks turn off and pretty much end at that area to your right here. We'll just kind of look down a little bit. And we head down further down the hill towards the Galata Tower, a historic tower in this neighborhood. Bayuglu. I think refers to this whole area in the immediate vicinity of the port is Beoglu. And we're really starting to go down the steeper part of the hill and from here on it just gets steeper and steeper going down the hill to the point where even the sidewalks have steps built into them. But for right now the cobblestones are enough. And traffic has resumed, so you've got cars and delivery trucks coming down this very, very narrow street. This is definitely uh, Gallup Dede, or Yuxek uh, Kaldirim. And we head on down to Kemeralti Kadasi, which is the uh, large avenue that surrounds the port area uh, and crosses over, still in European Istanbul. We did not go over into Asian Istanbul in this video. But you see references to Galata, Galata Port, and the Galata Tower. And all this area around where the Galata Tower is, and I think we're about coming up on it here, there it is. Hopefully I was smart enough to move the camera. The Galata Tower, surrounded by this neighborhood. Caught it just in time, there it is. And we proceed further down the hill. construction crew or maybe just the guy that owns that shop's got a couple of cones to keep people from parking there, keep the trucks from stopping there for any period of time. Proprietors cleaning off their sidewalks and pavements in front of their businesses. The hill is getting steeper and steeper going down, starting to wear into your toes and your boots after a little while. Wear good footwear when you come to a place like this. If you're going to do a lot of walking, you know, I know you think you're going to the beach a lot, uh, but in a city, I wear uh, Merrill shoes. I'm not asking for any compensation yet, anyway, from Merrill. But, uh, you know, between the cobblestones that you see here, very uneven, and some of the elevation changes, and sometimes you just run into flat-out rocky conditions that you didn't anticipate. Some very old architecture here, particularly on the left there, that stone wall or remains of a building. Looking down at the port area, I think in that last shot, you could just make out the bow of the ship. So we've wrapped around the Galata port. 
And we're getting into the area here you can see in the sidewalks where you've got steps built in to the sidewalks. Dump, down we go. And they become more and more frequent as the hill gets steeper and steeper. Just gotta stay off the street for the little delivery trucks and what have you. But we're coming back down, and here it's very, very steep. We're coming back down to sea level, and you can see traffic down there on Cameralti, just in the distance. Coming down towards the area around the water, right at the Golden Horn. Still little restaurants and cafes and jewelry shops, electronic shops. A city more, and the, the, the shops in the city here in this area, more for the people who live here, an electrician shop, electrical supply house. Back up that steep hill, look at the truck coming down it. Reminds you almost of San Francisco in certain areas where it's very, very steep. And traffic just slowly going down the hill. Look at that, look at that grade. Really wears into your toes after a while. But we're almost down at the level. We come down to Kemeralti and we're going to pick up a tram and head on over to the area around the Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque, the Sultanahmet Mosque, and the Basilica Cistern, which is across the street uh, from the Hagia Sophia. The Hagia Sophia now is an active mosque. Once again, it had been a museum from the time of um, Kemal Ataturk until very, very recently when the present president of Turkey, Mr. Erdogan, uh, decided to uh, have it be a mosque yet again. So it's a tourist destination, but it closes for services. And people do go into the Hagia Sophia, even though there are three or four different mosques in the immediate vicinity there. There's one over by uh, Kapali Karshi, which is the Grand Bazaar, and uh, of course Sultanahmet, and you have the uh, Yeni Kami Mosque down at Katakoi, which is what we're coming up on here right now. You'll see it out the tram windows in just a moment. Uh, a lot of mosques, but a lot of people live in Istanbul. A lot of people want to go worship. At a prior visit to the bazaar, where we'll be in just a little while, uh, we were there during prayers on a Friday and everything shut down. So here we are, and we're coming up on the Yeni Kami Mosque, Kami is mosque, uh, in Turkish. And there it is, looking out the windows of the tram. And the tram service in Istanbul, just as good as most of the metro is, uh, very clean, reasonably safe. Again, remember there are pickpockets. You want to secure your valuables. If you're carrying a bag, uh, sling it over your shoulder, something like that. I mean, it's not about the city. It's just about people. Uh, there are good people, there are bad people, and they are everywhere. So a little fast forward here. We're now approaching the area around Sultanahmet. And we've looped around. If you're following us on a map, uh, that is the whole complex around the Sultanahmet, the Sultanahmet Mosque, the Blue Mosque, uh, and the Hagia Sophia. And there's also the tomb of Sultan Mehmed III. And as I mentioned, in the immediate vicinity, uh, the mosques around the Grand Bazaar, which is just up the street, as well as a whole lot else in this immediate area, the uh, Basilica Cistern. If you remember watching the James Bond movie from Russia with Love, uh, the scenes in Istanbul that were shot in the caverns underneath were shot in the Basilica Cistern. Ali Karim Bey had his little secret passageways in there, and all that was shot in the Basilica Cistern. A lot of restoration has been done. Hopefully on a future trip to Istanbul, uh, we can do some footage inside the Basilica Cistern. There just was not time on this particular day. As the tram goes by, once the tram's gone by and there's no traffic, people just flood across the street. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to this little park area in front of the Blue Mosque, and we'll walk down for just a brief look 
over at the Hagia Sophia. Obviously one of the largest tourist attractions in Istanbul is the Hagia Sophia. And the lines were already getting quite long, but this beautiful plaza, you can just sit and uh, take a look at your surroundings and enjoy it. Police presence is very, very good. We'll see some police officers here in just a little while patrolling the immediate area. And the Hagia Sophia with its minarets. The sixth century cathedral. One of the oldest structures in Christendom. Certainly one of the oldest and largest if you combine those two things. But just a nice walk on a beautiful day to see a great piece of history even from a distance. It is absolutely magnificent. And we'll turn around through the fountains. You see the Blue Mosque, the Sultanahmet Mosque, through that park. Well, time for a cup of Turkish tea. We are in Kapalı Karşı, which is the largest mall. My friend waving at me he says, where did you come from? He didn't even expect to see me. He's laughing. But we are in the Grand Bazaar of Istanbul. And this is something I really wish I hadn't lost. This is my friend Nizametin on the left. And a guy that walked in, and I'm trying to remember where he was from, but he was giving some kind of performance on a little karaoke microphone in the rug shop here. And uh, they turned it over to me and I did some uh, Renaissance choral music for them out of the Christian tradition, which I'm sure they had never heard, but they were very surprised to hear that from me too. Some of these guys who are in the rug business here, I'm, I'm an auctioneer, I do uh, some things in rugs and antiques, and these are my friends. And we're in another shop belonging to a friend of mine here, uh, Errol Kajansi, and uh, Errol, Errol thinks I'm a hoot. Uh, I ended up coming home with the saddlebag that's hanging on the wall behind him. Uh, I think he was trying to uh, interest me in this particular rug here. You will, you, you will find nothing but entertainment, coffee, and tea in the shops in the Grand Bazaar if you make friends with these people, but this rug was uh, an antique and it was owned by the successor to Kemal Ataturk, the second president of the Turkish Republic, and he had just bought it. Uh, and he was very, very proud of it. And I'm sorry we didn't get his commentary on it, but his assistant is showing us just how beautiful this rug is. Uh, Errol is also the owner of some very fine rugs uh, worth six, maybe even a couple of them, seven figures. And I've got a picture of that one there that was on the coffee table in an older uh, rug dealer's magazine here. Uh, a very important piece of Turkish history uh, and something we may take to auction sometime in the future. We'll see as Errol decides what he wants to do with some of the more valuable pieces in his collection. As a lot of vendors and interesting antiques are concerned, uh, they care about where their children go, like I do with my collector cars and watches and, and rugs and such. We want them all to go to good homes. So just a tour now through Kapalı Karşı, the, the Grand Bazaar. And we'll do a little walking tour just of uh, the sights and unfortunately not many of the sounds. Uh, you're going to have to extrapolate the sounds from the activity that you see. A lot of the vendors in the Grand Bazaar are vendors of either ordinary goods, uh, goods that come in from all places in the world. Unfortunately, a lot of them uh, Chinese junk and knockoffs and what have you. People will try to sell you uh, things that you could buy just about anywhere else or things that would be illegal to purchase in a lot of places like a uh, counterfeit Rolex watch. Uh, there are probably more counterfeit Rolex watches here uh, than anywhere other than places in the Far East where they make such things but uh, we're not gonna do a lot of commentary on that. The structure itself is a rabbit warren in and of itself. It is generally indoors. Uh, it is a fascinating place to spend a day. Uh, you can easily spend a day here uh, just kind of browsing shops. And they have these broad corridors, all of them uh, painted on the ceilings and uh, very, very well maintained for the ages of the structures. There are numerous access points to more shopping on the outside. Uh, there's also the university at one end. Uh, there's a mosque at another end. Um, at uh, Sembrelitas, the, the, the burnt pillar. Um, but a very large complex, the largest indoor mall in the world. 
Uh, but I, you know, calling it a mall is almost an insult because it is a collection of unusual items and beautiful items. Uh, within the Grand Bazaar is also uh, just the antique bazaar, which have shops that are solely uh, items that are antiques and not new consumer goods uh, or new production items. Uh, lots of places to change your money. Uh, I think we come up on one of the little wagons, uh, little, little uh, push carts, uh, security boxes, safes, whatever you want to call it, uh, guarded by personnel taking money in and out of the Grand Bazaar because so much money changes hands in a place like this. And please forgive the flickering lights. A lot of these LEDs are different frequencies and you can only tune the camera to, uh, to one. So some of them make it look like a disco in here. Uh, probably should have done a warning at the beginning of the video. There's another videographer shooting the Grand Bazaar because there's so much to shoot. Uh, we can't all see the same things and see it in the same ways but uh, you have seen a hundredth of the inside of this complex in these few minutes of doing video. The uh, security checkpoint, there's security checkpoints coming in at all points uh, here. Uh, I've set the beeper off almost every single time. They don't seem to care. Maybe I look like I'm a pretty okay guy, so uh, they don't seem to mind very much. And we're coming out towards this mosque here. That's the gates of the mosque. That's some of the outdoor vendor areas. And the outdoor vendor areas extend well past the interior of the Grand Bazaar. So we could walk through the mosque, but I think I opted to go up this little street. I did. And rug vendors and jewelry vendors and Turkish delights. This guy would really love to sell me a rug today, but uh, I believe I already had a saddlebag in my possession going up the street that I had left. And there's the security box, the Luma security box full of cash uh, going down to uh, feed the coffers. And here's another one coming too. The money coming into this place and going out of this place is incredible. Security boxes with security personnel. So a lot of ways to get out of this area. You can take a leisurely walk back up to the avenue and walk along the tram line. You can walk, kind of cut the corner of the curve. If you pull up a map of this area of Istanbul, you can cut the curve going back down towards uh, Karakoy uh, and Eminonu, I believe it is. Uh, and it goes down a very steep hill. You can obviously ride the tram back and the tram does go back the same tram line pretty much uh, you have to watch which tram car you get on. Some of them don't go the whole distance, but most of them do go uh, back to the area of the Galata port. So I believe that's what I opted to do. So here's, here we are, we're at the mosque at the Galata port terminal now. Got off at the, uh, the station for Galata port. And we're going to re-enter the Galata port terminal. And there are a couple of different entries, and at this far entry, there was a large student group uh, coming into the Galata port, so we were we could have waited, uh, but I opted to go back down to the one I had come out of earlier and go back into it instead. So there's just a very easy security checkpoint where you put your phone in a little basket and run your bag through the x-ray machine and step on through, and you get into the Galata port, and we showed that on the way out uh, when we came out of the Galata port just a little earlier. So here's the student group just up here and they are queuing up to go through that checkpoint there. So nice walk in the park here. And now on the other side of the security checkpoint, obviously I couldn't film the security checkpoint, but people coming through there, some of my fellow passengers as well as people who want to come to the mall here at the Galata Port. And I'm sorry I didn't get to take more uh, video here in the Galata Port. Uh, it's not for lack of trying. I actually had done it the previous evening and uh, none of that came out. But we're coming back. It's very convenient to get from that security checkpoint and go back into the building that is directly over the entrance to Passport, Customs and so on uh, for the Galata port. There it is. See it right over the door there. And the door's open and we go in. Beautiful halls here. All brand new construction and people headed back to the ship, it looks like, uh, directly ahead, going down the escalators. This is 
I'd have to say about mid-afternoon at this point, it's a little bit later uh, in the day than when we came up out of here. I spent a lot of time with my friends in the Grand Bazaar, visited with them and did a little bit of wandering around. Uh, had obviously been doing a lot of the other uh, walking around that resulted in some of the videos earlier as we went up and down through Taxim Square, so that took some time. But uh, descending into the basements of the Galata Port Terminal. And in this case, we didn't have to go all the way down, we just had to go down one more of the remaining two, and then we're directed through the parking deck to get over to security passport control rather than going down to go back up into that same exact place. So they're very nice to let us through, a little shortcut. And we'll go through the parking garage area. It's a very large area. Telling us now, nope, don't go down, go, go around. So, through into the door here, wait for the guy to open the door on the other side, hello. Nope, and he says, hi, good to see you again. Go over to gate 11, I remember you. Remember me? I remember you. Now we're going through this expansive area here where limousines and taxis can drop people directly off uh, at the door if they're allowed to go to that place. Then you just go to the right spot, go down to the door here, and behind this door is a the main security checkpoint for entering the cruise port. And then beyond that, if you have not already checked into the ship, then the ship's personnel check you in at those desks there. Uh, but we're going to make a U-turn as we go up through this door. We just got to walk down the hall to the right door. I want to say it was door number 11 or 12. So it's a little ways down. There are more of the desks for the check-in of cruise ship passengers and behind that the security area where they check your bags and they check you over. Make sure that everything's okay. Everything's safe to go back on the ship. You don't have to go through it on the ship. So there's from the other side and the passport desks. And this is the way back into the hallway, but not the first hallway, kind of a second hallway. We've got to go up an escalator here and uh, go through the turnstiles, just a final security checkpoint. Up the escalator we go. And it rings you back into the inner layer of security here. Transit gates are that way. So we've got our little card. I think I put the camera in my pocket for a second. So we've got some funny camera angles here. Scan the card, go right on through. And you can take a door to the right or you can go down to the duty free shop. So I'll just take a little tour down here of the nice duty free shop in the Galata Port Terminal. They've got Turkish Delights. If you didn't get any Turkish Delights when you were out in Istanbul, uh, you can still get some here. You can get a little bit of uh, this, that, and the other from Turkey. You can buy some cigars. You can buy a limited supply of alcohol. Uh, it's not like the airport duty-freeze, but uh, it's a pretty good duty-free shop. I've been in here before and on a prior trip through this terminal, picked up a bunch of cigars. They don't have a half bad humidor in here. Pick up your cigarettes and cigars, and there's the special offer for Turkish Delights and magnets and what have you. But lots of good stuff in the duty free. They'll bring the alcohol to you. Make sure if you're on a cruise ship, you don't have to pay a corking fee. So here we are at the exit to the duty free, and this is uh, gate B is that way, gate A is the other direction. The Norwegian ship that had pulled in uh, after we left this morning on this walk uh, that is now up there. Uh, that was on gate A, which was a left out of the door of the duty free. And now we just have a very long walk through the corridors of the basement of the Galata Port Terminal. Well, it's pleasant, but it is a good hike. So it's like a lot of other things in Istanbul. The distances are long and uh, this is your last reminder that you come to Istanbul and the distances are long. So on the screens it shows that the Norwegian ship is one way and the Azamara ship is the way that I'm presently walking. We haven't even, it's just A through B one direction and C, D and E the other, it's not C, D, E and F. There's five 
gateways through the concrete. And we were in gate D. So continuing to walk. Going past the door. I think that's the door that I came out earlier. Some people are actually a little late getting to Istanbul and going through all the uh, procedures. Azamara onward, gate D. A little further down the hallway here to the ship. Just a little more walking and we'll be at gate D. And here we are on the ramp we came down earlier this morning. The Norwegian ship is in the other berth. We'll just look at it quickly through the fence here before we go back up to the Azamara onward. And that evening we left Istanbul and we went on to Kanakali, Turkey. There's a lot of videos that I did on this trip, both in our cruising and uh, venturing around the Greek Isles. So I hope you'll look at all of those. Uh, but last look at the Azamara onward. And I just wanted to say thanks for watching this episode of Travel with Chip. Please subscribe, share, appreciate all your support. And again, we've got a lot of great videos here from this trip and coming up soon in the future. Thanks again.